Now we've looked at trigger outputs and how we can use them to activate things in our rack. Now let's look at trigger inputs. So in order to trigger one of these, I'm just going to quickly wire up this uh, little IntelliGel touch plate. And it's just a little uh, touch sensor. When you touch it hard enough, it triggers a gate you can see by the little red one there. So I've wired that up to trigger input one. And what that means is every time I press here, it'll run script one. So that leads us to the scripts. If we press tap to go from live mode into script mode, you'll recognize that by the little number down here. That lets us write a script, which is just multiple lines of commands. So everything we've been doing so far, just tied together as a little piece. If you're not seeing a one, or if you accidentally press something that gets you somewhere else, the way that you cycle through your different scripts is by using a bracket left and right. So here's me pressing my way through, and you'll see we have eight scripts. Then we have a script called M, we'll get to what that is later. We have a script called I, get to that later too. And then we circle back to script one. So if you make sure that you are in script one, and then we can do exactly what we've been doing all along. In this case, we can send out a pulse to trigger output one. Once I press enter, that's now the first line of my script. So if I were to add something after this, I could say trick pulse two. This now means that every time this script is run, first it's gonna trigger trigger output one, and then it's gonna trigger trigger output two. I don't have anything attached to trigger output two right now, so it doesn't really do much, but you know, just for good measure. So in theory now, when I trigger trigger input one, that should run script one, and it should trigger output one and two. Let's try that. Magic, right? That's pretty awesome. Now, you might wonder, these are outputs, those are inputs. Can I use my own trigger outputs to trigger my inputs? Well, let's figure that out. Let's uh, take trigger two and put that into script two. So now when we trigger one, it'll run the script that triggers output one and output two, and our output two is wired back into trigger input two. So that should trigger script two. Let's uh, at least try it out and see what happens here. I mean, in theory that works, but we don't really know because we don't have anything wired up to the script of script two. So let's uh, remove the lines, the line, the first line in script in our current script, which is this one here. Trigger pulse one. Um, notice how I can use my up and down arrows to go through the individual lines of this. If I want to remove a line, I just use backspace to remove it. Press enter. And now you'll see that the second line moves up to now be the first. So now this is all we have in script one. We just trigger output two, which triggers script two. But there's nothing in script two. So we no longer hear the sound. So let's use the hard brackets to move to script two. You can see the little two down here. And then let's trigger output one here. This is a good uh, sample. I made a little typo, I used a comma instead of a dot here. And immediately, as you're entering individual lines into your script in the edit mode, um, Teletype will actually pass them and tell you if it understands what you're writing or not, even if it's not executing them like in the live mode. Let's go fix that. There we go. So now, <laughs> script one is gonna be activated from here. That's going to send the pulse out from output two. Output two is going to trigger script one, uh, script two, which is going to pulse 
outward one. And that's going to let us hear the plonk. A little complicated, but bear with me. There we go. Now we're once again hearing the output. So this is essentially how you write larger pieces of code. Um, you have these uh, scripts tied to each of the inputs and you trigger them and then a lot of code gets run and it does outputs. Um, you actually very rarely will wire your outputs into your input. So you can do some really fun things with that. Uh, but usually if you want to do that, it's because you're sending it somewhere else that then sends a trigger back. So let me just remove this cable in here. So now we're back to the state of pressing this triggers uh, script one. Script one triggers, let's have a look at it. Trip one triggers output two, but that now doesn't go anywhere. So now we no longer hear anything. So you can see the light lights up, but nothing happens. So what you'll actually do is you'll use the command script. So if we now from script one call script two, then we're doing the same as if we were triggering it, but we're not wasting one of the outputs because we only have one, four outputs. So we want to make sure that we preserve those for when we actually need them. But now when I press the gate, things work just as they did before. Script one gets activated and it activates script two and script two, it sends the pulse out from trick output one. So that gave you a little glimmer of how you tie together more commands than what you can do in the live mode. So the next step is once you have that, your whole project in teletype language is called a scene. And so a scene is all of your individual scripts. And every time you turn it on and off, you are essentially losing what's in there. So we want to save this. The way you do that is you press Alt Escape. And you'll see that you're now in a different kind of mode. So this is the scene right mode. You'll notice that it says right up here. Be very careful with that. If you just press escape and not alt escape, you're going into the read mode and you might accidentally overwrite what you have. But right now we're in write mode and we can give this a name. My first project trigger one script. Two, that might be a way. Oh, I'm out of trigger one script two. That might be a way for me to remember it. So you have a few little lines here where you can add a description of what it does. Um, honestly, the way I'm using that in, in my scenes is I'll tell myself not the details of how the code works, but how I should interact with it. So if I come back to something half a year later, I might need to know which input to trigger to drive certain behavior. I might need to know how to wire it up to get the, uh, the expected output. Once I've written my description and I've chosen a slot, you can use the brackets to switch between slots. You see the slot number you're in right now, we're in slot number three. Uh, then you hold down Alt once again and press Enter. So now our little project is saved into slot three and now we could do some changes i could oops i could switch this to trigger output four and now we'll see we're no longer making sound but we're triggering output four so let's go load the version that worked this time i'm going to press escape without alt and i will see my project here Again, you can use the hard brackets to circle between the different projects. This is the one I want. Press enter and it loads it. And we're back to where we were before I started fiddling with it. That's the general uh, way that you write scripts and you save them as a scene and load them again. Now, be really careful with uh, the whole concept of accidentally pressing escape and getting into project mode. 
you do not want to press enter here unless you really want to overwrite what you're doing right now. Instead, press escape to get back out. Same goes if you accidentally press alt escape and get into write mode and you don't actually want to overwrite anything. Press escape to get back out. Um, I've had a little too many accidents of accidentally not saving and instead loading another project. Uh, so just something to really be aware of so you don't lose your hard work. I think that's about it for, for this video. As usual, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're curious about, what I can go deep into. Thanks for watching.